Welcome to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Certification course. Uh, all of you that are in the auditorium can be seated. Welcome to all of you. All of you that are watching online, welcome all of you. And once again, we're going to be picking up here in the Responsibility Unit. You can go ahead and be turning over to page 74. We're going to be concluding, of course, uh, this chapter. We was talk uh, concerning time management. You know, the uh, tick tock, tick tock. That's what we're talking about. You know, it's more. It's more than just something we throw out the side as a, a side comment or something we joke about. Time management is, management is very important, and that's what we've been going over. And of course, all of these things tying together to bring forth positive character. And that's really the goal of what we're striving to do. And for the most part, we can see ourselves getting better. You know, when we take the things we've learned, we're still going to see things about ourselves. And one thing that that we learn. And this is what one thing we learned here at the Peaceful Solution Headquarters. When you start looking at each other, really not that bad. We just kind of hold each other to a higher standard because we've been studying this a lot more. So we notice things that the average person wouldn't even notice. And we hold each other to that standard. And that's not a bad thing as long as we're very compassionate about how we hold each other to that standard, you know? <laughs> how dare you be late? That's why it was my turn. Not that we do that, but you know, these are things we're learning together and we're developing. And of course, we are very familiar. There's some appointments that we come to in our lives that are extremely important that we don't set the date or the schedule and we have to be there on time because if you miss that appointment, it's gone. You know, and those are things that everybody can have those in their life. You know, there's some days that people they don't want to miss. You don't want to miss, you know, your appointment. You know, going to get married, nobody wants to miss that. I've heard people even joke, oh, that guy would be late for his funeral. He wouldn't even be there on time for that. Because someone develops this, uh, you know, habit of not being responsible. But as we're looking here on page 74, I want to remind everyone as we start, and I'll remind everyone at the end of this class, we will not have a class that will, that will stream out live this coming Sunday. We have a special event here at the Peaceful Solution Headquarters, so our next class is going to be the 27th of March, which is going to be a week from today. So if you're tuning in, watching online, and for those of you that are here in the auditorium, we will not have a class this Sunday, but next Wednesday, due to the special event that will be taking place here at the Peaceful Solution headquarters uh, in dealing with uh, some ceremonies that we will uh, honor at that time. So looking here on page 74, once again, picking up here with what I have learned, we were on the fifth uh, point here going over and rehearsing what we had learned in this chapter so we're going to pick up with to manage my time I will strive to get to all functions on time so we went over that looking back over to page 72 page 72 and we talked about what it means to show up on time for your job or if you have an appointment you know a dental appointment and if you look at how things are being done in society uh, and I bring up dental appointments because that's one thing that if you make, they'll confirm with you. You get text and they'll call you and try to remind you. So there's so many ways they actually try to remind people, hey, you got an appointment, a doctor's appointment, a dental appointment. And then they tell you, if you don't show up, you're going to be charged a $50 fee or a $30 fee, depending on who the physician is. Some of them are a $100 fee if you don't show up for your appointment because they have a schedule and they have a waiting list and they're needing people to be responsible. Well, of course, there is supposed to be something based on health, but they also have to run a business, and that's what they're doing. And, of course, they have overhead they need to pay, and if your customers make appointments and don't show up, that's bad for business. You have an open time slot that, of course, you can't fill a 2 o'clock appointment at 2.05 when you realize, oh, I guess they're not showing up after all. So they charge you. So you see where you're actually charged for not being responsible. But here on page 72, in the middle of the page, you see the take the time to be organized. Using less time to fulfill your obligations leaves you with more time to do the things you want to do. Well, then the next paragraph reminded us that learning to manage time also includes getting to all appointments on time. People who are frequently late are seen as irresponsible and unreliable. Learning to be on time for events and activities, notice it demonstrates you're showing something, something that people can see. It demonstrates not only responsibility, but also shows respect for other people. So once again, 
You know, you're showing people that you respect them when you show up on time. If you show up late, you don't let them know, you give no notification, you just walk in, you know, beyond the agreed time. Well, that's a form of disrespect, and you're, you're wasting the other person's time as well. But once again, learning to be on time for events and activities demonstrates not only responsibility, but also respect for other people. So notice how those two things are working together. The fact is, no one likes to be kept waiting, especially when it occurs frequently. It causes the person who is waiting to become frustrated and annoyed. And remember, those are two of the things, emotions, that can lead to anger. Remember, anger is a secondary emotion. Frustration is one way you can get the, to the anger spot very quickly. And to not leave out, remember we went over a few simple ways to help us be on time. Another one was buy reliable watch and wear it. Of course, almost everybody these days, you know, we use our cell phones. You got the time on your cell phone, and I, I don't know how many alarms I have on my cell phone that is set and preset, but it's close to 40. I have alarms because sometimes I have class at 3.30 a.m. in the morning internationally, you know, and sometimes I have to be certain places at certain times, so I have certain alarms, and they have certain ringtones. When I hear them go off, I can tell them by the ringtone what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Um, notice also buy a reliable alarm clock and use it. In today's society, most people use their cell phones for that too. You can set your watch and clock 10 minutes earlier than function as if it was the actual time. The only problem is I will take advantage of that. So it doesn't work for me because I'll look at my clock and go, ah, I got 10 more minutes anyway. You know, I, I used to do that until I realized that it doesn't help me because I, I tend to go, ah, I gave myself a, they call it a grace period. You know, that's what it is. Or you can write a schedule of daily activities and events and refer to it often. You know, this is something that schools must do, teachers must do to, uh, to achieve their goals. Everyone does this when you have a lot of activity going on. Businesses do this, you know, even in my business, I have a list of jobs and they have to be done by certain days and all of them are laid out that way. Why? Because people were promised things and you try to work it all out so people receive things. Or if you're having class, you know, if the teacher doesn't show up from the teacher's break or the students don't show up to the class, you have disorganization. Also, notice, use a calendar to write in events and activities that are scheduled for a later time. You know, in, in today's society, once again, these things right here, you know, I was, um, I was on a flight recently, and I'd never noticed it before, but I, I kind of went through my phone and realized, yeah, it's come up, I just never noticed it. It'll tell you when, when you can board your plane. And then after you board your plane, right before takeoff, your phone actually tells you you need to put your cell phone on airplane mode. Your phone's telling you this, not the stewardess who's already told you that four or five times already. Your phone actually notifies you because you've checked in and it shows you checked in. If you use your phone, it scans, it recognizes it. So your phone can keep up with you fairly well and it, it keeps up with your daily activities. So once again, we kind of get spoiled. You know, people used to carry a daily planner and now they're in the cell phones and that's, that's what I use. I'm kind of very different. With a daily planner, a digital works better for me. When it comes to reading a book, I can't stand digital books. I have to have something I can write in. And that's kind of how it works for me, but it doesn't mean it works that way for everybody. I know people that like uh, doing it otherwise, but the goal is just do it. You know, just get it set up. I'm not trying to advertise for Nike either. I'm talking about just do it as far as making a positive decision, making a positive choice. And notice here it says, think about it. Time loss can never be regained. And at, when you're young, you know, when you're in high school, when you're in your 20s, 30s, sadly, I know 40s now, and I know there's people here that are older than I am that can give me insight, because I'm only 51. It's amazing how fast life goes by. You don't realize it until you get older. And you don't get the opportunity to go back and, ah, I should have done this when I was 20. Well, if you're 40, you're looking 20 years back. That's over half your life ago. You know, so you, you talk about getting things organized. You know, it's kind of like um, we always use this example of buying a house for students. You know, if you want to buy a house, don't wait till you're 60 to go buy a house. Well, I can get a 30-year mortgage. Do you really want to be paying house payments when you're 90 years old? That's when you'll complete your house payments. You know, that's, that's not the way you want to do it. 
and of course save you can you can accomplish many things to help us you know do these things we're talking about being on time and of course the next one turning back to page 74 this ties into it with what we're talking about when we do these things remember we talked about being organized this was last class and we talked about now how to manage our time to strive to get to all functions on time and it can be any function no matter what function it is specifically we're talking about classroom settings but even in adult settings you know there's different ways you can do things to get yourself prepared to be on time and if it's something we really want to do we work it out i know some young men um this last season that wanted to go deer hunting and boy i tell you what i you'd go to get them up at six o'clock and they're all sitting there on the sofa ready to go at 5 30. i mean you didn't have to do anything but if it's time to go to school you go in the room at 7 30 and it's like wow where are you come on guys mega let's go you almost got to do some kind of yoga with them while they're in the sleep to get them awake and of course i think back on it and i think yeah this is how my mom and dad had to do me i know where they got that from it came from me you know i if i wanted to do something oh man i was up and ready to go you didn't have to wake me up i would be up but if it was something that asked ah, just a day-to-day -day thing i wouldn't get excited about it but looking here at the next bullet point it says i can cut down on my stress and frustration by completing the things i need to do in a more timely fashion you know, and looking back over to the, pot, the top of page 73, and it's the joys of time management. You know, the joys, not the nightmare. You know, and here at Peaceful Solution Headquarters, you know, in planning for our one-day event where we're going to have many people come in, you know, you'll have a lot of, uh, when I, after our last one-day event, it was like, oh, we got months to get this stuff done. You know, we'll get this done and get that done and get this done. And then you realize, oh, wow, we just got like a week and a half, and this, we're going to have to, you know, have all this together. And it's very thankful that we have a lot of diligent people that they start preparing. When one event's over, they immediately start preparing for the next event. And it's those people that really make, when everybody's working together, it makes the end job a thousand times easier, uh, probably a million times easier, because of their diligence in putting forth effort to get these things done. But notice the joys of time management is supposed to be a joy. It gives us more time to do the things we want to do. When we Remember, we talked about our needs versus wants. And whenever we manage our time, it does give us the time to do what we want to do, which should be, I'm talking in a positive way. Notice here it says on the top of page 73, when you manage your time effectively, you demonstrate that you can be relied upon and trusted by others. You know, and that's something that is worth it's really worth more than it's weight in gold. When somebody can look at you and you know they trust you and you know you can be trusted, because that means you've put, forth, you've put forth a lot of hard effort, uh, hard work to earn that trust of someone. But you can lose it fairly quickly. You know, and that's the sad part about it is we can do, we can do things in a very negative way and very quickly that can disappear. But notice here it says, you then have a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment because you complete your obligations in a timely manner. And remember what we talked about was self-respect and having our mindset in a positive way. And we're not talking about being arrogant, but it is nice to know if someone says you can trust that guy. If he tells you he'll get that done and he'll be here at this time, you can trust him. You know, and sometimes you know when something is overlooked and something doesn't show up, you know, well, there's something wrong. Let's give them a reminder, you know, a kind reminder, not a shouting and screaming and yelling, you know, where the blank you been with my stuff. But, you know, hey, do you remember this? Because sometimes we honestly forget things because we don't write them down. And as William was saying in one of his classes not long ago, you know, it's just like accomplishing goals. When we want to do these things, we write them down. We set a schedule as we talked about. Well, people who manage their time well also reduce their stress and frustration. Knowing where your belongings are, pacing yourself, and being on time can keep your day running smoothly. You know, there's certain days that myself and other Peaceful Solution instructors, we don't know what we're doing, or we get a schedule that tells us what we're going to be doing. Um, sometimes uh, we'll have classes internationally starting on Saturday. We get our, we get our schedule sent to us on a Friday night. And sometimes we're doing things up until 11, 12, even 1 o'clock in the morning, 
and you look at your schedule that got sent to you and your next class is 3.30 a.m. or 4 a.m. And you didn't finish your schedule for Friday until 11 p.m. or 12, midnight. You know, and you don't get to go, ah, well, the 4 o'clock class will understand if I don't show up. I'll be sleepy. Don't work that way. You know, you've got to get it done. You have to put all of these things together. And, you know, that's why I was laughing about six hours sleep. You know, I had a, a great teacher one time worked with him for many years and he told me he's and he was a great teacher great great teacher and he told me he said you know in this job all of you men because he was our supervisor in a job that me and a lot of other men were doing for years and he said you need to get six hours sleep minimum six hours I was like, okay okay i understand and because we were so busy doing things some of us were sleeping two and three hours and that was it and so I go home, I go lay down, I go to sleep, turn off you know, everything but my cell phone in case there's an emergency. An hour later, I get a phone call, and it's him. Where are you at? I said, well, you told me to go home and get six hours sleep. Well, I didn't mean consecutive six hours. Just make it six hours throughout the day. <laughs> you know, and that's, uh, but that's the way he was, too. You know, he was that way, and, and he, he knew the author of The Peaceful Solution really well, too. And, and he was a great example uh, to a lot of us because he was very diligent in accomplishing tasks and he was very timely and he taught us that and everything we did through the activities that that group of men did was set to a schedule I mean down to the minute it was set to a schedule because there were many things that we had to do that were operated 24 hours that day and you would go seven to eight days and everything was on a 24-hour schedule and everything had to be rotated between 25, 30 guys. And everybody working together actually made it fairly easy. It was only if somebody didn't show up or somebody overslept, you know, but we were, we were, we were really blessed enough in that situation where everybody that participated in that, you know, they looked at this time management and knew that if we all play our part in this, we're going to have a great time this week. But if we didn't play our part in this, we're going to have a miserable time this week. But everybody played their part, and that kept things running smoothly, and it did reduce the stress drastically. You know, because it, if, if somebody, if you'd had just three or four people not have done their part, the stress levels would have skyrocketed. It would have caused problems. And all of these things would have kind of crumbled in on themselves because you don't stop events when they're operating. You have to keep them going. And it's the same way as when a peaceful solution teacher prepares to teach a class. If you know you have to teach a class, like this one starts at 5.30, it's probably best you don't start preparing at 5 o'clock or 4.30. It's best that you read over the material. You know, the way we were taught to do it by the author of the peaceful solution, you know, read the whole chapter that week. And then again, go back and read over your material you're going to teach. And before you teach, go back and read it one more time. So before you teach it, you've read over it three times to get it in your mind, just to kind of solidify it there, because these books kind of go, they tie in together. But it will reduce the stress. And of course, no matter how you put this together, it keeps things running smoothly. And that's what we need to concentrate on. That's what we've learned there. When we do this, everything runs much better. So going back over to page 74, once again, and looking here at the last bullet point, responsible people who manage their time successfully are trusted to be dependable. And that's at the very bottom of page 73. And once again, when we earn this trust, it's something we should find satisfaction with, as we just read. But at the bottom here, it says, learning to manage your time will not only help you now, but also in the future. As you mature, your responsibilities will increase, as will your duties and obligations. And, of course, this is not just towards children. This can also be toward adults. I know a group of men that went from being responsible for some fairly important details who are now responsible for some very, very, very important details. And the age varies from, like, middle 30s to the middle 70s. You know, and they can change in an instant the responsibilities to become more stressful, the way I would define it, <laughs> but more, you know, more responsibility. And it requires not only them to work together, but a whole group of people working together. 
and they do, you know, and it's a great example. There's many uh, corporations you'll see do things and many organizations you'll see. And, of course, we're really, we're really uh, you know, at the advantage of being able to work with people that have been training in the Peaceful Solution for many years, and they're able to all come together. And, you know, we're still growing. We're still learning to implement these things into our lives because it's a long process. It's not something you do overnight. But, of course, this maturity doesn't mean from 17 to 18 to 19 to 20, but it means maturity and developing positive character. And you can be 65 or 70 and still be doing that. And that's really what we're all doing, and we're working very hard to accomplish this. But notice here we talked about how it is a fact that employers want people who are timely and who can manage their time properly. To simply put it, no one will want to pay you for just sitting around and wasting time. An employer who trusts, who wants to trust that his employees are conscientious and dependable, so take the initiative by being, that's you, making the choice, putting forth the effort, us, all of us together, uh, taking the initiative and begin putting forth these time management techniques to use in your and our lives. You will improve the quality of your life today and set the foundation for managing your time effectively as an adult. Now remember that foundation has to be set firmly. We don't want to set a foundation that's you know got cracks in it and you know I've been to countries that and I think I brought it up here before where you know there's no building code in some of these countries and I just so occurred to be somewhere it was a very poor part and it was a city uh, in Medellin, Colombia. And I was in a very very poor part and people were making houses and they're out of clay clay blocks like cinder blocks but they're clay and they were building they were adding the fourth story and I'm looking at it and of course there's just houses everything is together there is no it's not like Texas where you got open space there's no open space if there's a spot somewhere somebody's done put something in it then the building was like this the first floor next floor was kind of like this and the next floor was kind of like this and I asked the guy, I said, why does the building go like that and like that? He goes, well, by the time I get to the fourth floor, I'll have it straight with the first floor. Because I noticed he ran a string line all the way down. And I asked, I said, does no one come and tell you you can't do that? No, we don't really have inspections here. We just build. And I thought, wow, you are some brave people. I said, I don't know who's brave. The, you know, the person that builds it or the person that lives in it? One of you guys are brave because I don't know the stability and he's like, ah, we don't ever have problems. Everything's like that. So I started looking around, and he was right. Everything kind of around there in that neighborhood was built like that. So, you know, somehow they figured out how to balance out, you know, <laughs> when it's not in square. And I'm not making fun of them because you're talking about people that made do with what they had, you know. And, of course, they're trying, they're under definitely huge time constraints to try to accomplish getting things done because their time is beyond money. So with that in mind, turn over to, to lesson plan five, page A. And once again, this is why it's so important. I hope everyone has a teacher's manual um, or at least they've downloaded it. You can get it there off of Facebook. And I know there's a couple people that are watching through the Peaceful Solution app that have been asking uh, how they can receive the books. Just email the Peaceful Solution you can email at info at peacefulsolution.org and we will send you these PDF files so you will have them. And once again, you know, we have people, can we print the book? Absolutely. We, we encourage people. We have people print these books all over the world. The only thing we ask is, well, when you get the PDF, you're going to get a file you can't edit anyway. So you should print the book exactly how we send it because we don't send you a file that you can go in and open up and start changing um, you know, don't be putting cover pages on that removes the author's name and you put your own name in it. I just say that because we've seen that before. You know, the author's name stays in the book. The whole book has to stay as it is. Otherwise, you could find yourself in some copyright infringement, you know, and, and we're not looking for that. We're just looking for education. That's what we desire to do. So, yes, you can print the books, uh, print as many as you want to. If you need student manuals, you know, we just had a request for uh, this from a certain country, and that lets us know things are going well, because all we sent was PDFs for teachers, and they sent back, hey, I need one for students, you know, because I need to be able to do this, this, and this. And that shows us not only are they reading it, they're studying it pretty well, because they comprehended that they need to do all these things, and they even could have a great conversation 
about what it is that they needed to do. And that, that gets us excited here at The Peaceful Solution because our only goal is to educate to make better choices. Educate ourselves as we're here going through these classes with other teachers, but also help others educate the world because we all need to be educated. You know, here at The Peaceful Solution, I'm sitting, I've got teachers sitting in front of me everywhere. It's not that way when we go into different countries. Most people that are sitting in this auditorium have been training in the Peaceful Solution, some for 15, 20, and 30 years. And that says a lot, but it's not that way when you go into other countries. You might have one teacher in a city of 4 million, and it's a huge challenge to try to get this across. But I tell you what, it's amazing how it's working. Never met anybody yet that didn't agree with the Peaceful Solution. And... I would say we're on a time schedule too to get people educated. You know, it's uh world's getting crazy. You know, we you gotta do as but the best you can as fast as you can. Well, here in chapter five, we're going to be going over the note to the teacher. And once again, this is on lesson plan five, page A. It's not a one time thing, and that's what we're talking about here. This will be chapter five, building off of everything that we've covered so far. And in this chapter, even in this note to the teacher, you're going to see where we're going to pull back in parts of the character unit, parts of the acceptance unit, parts of the self-control unit, the respect unit, and we're putting it all together. And in fact, you're going to see that there were things in the character unit we read that we actually put it all together in the responsibility unit. And it actually is part of the deciding factor. So here at the very beginning of the page, note to the teacher, it says, how does the progress from developing the character trait of responsibility to being a responsible person. So how does one progress? How does one advance themselves, build themselves, develop themselves? Well, what is the deciding factor? It is common knowledge that making a responsible decision once does not mean an individual is responsible. Now I wanna call you back and due to me leaving my external hard drive in the wrong vehicle, this will be my slide for today. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to go to the overhead for it. The deciding factor, I just want to show it to you. I know you're not going to be able to read it very well. Um, but this is page 127 from the character unit. And that's for your notes. Page 127 from the character unit. It was entitled The Deciding Factor. And I want you to think about what we're talking about here. Responsibility. Developing responsibility. And remember, our leaders, positive leaders are responsible. Well, let me read to you once again what we covered in the the character unit, page 127. It says, we are literally surrounded by leaders. In every activity, organization, town, and nation, there are leaders. Regardless of whether some someone is the president of an organization or the coach of a football team, their leadership style will basically fall into one of two categories, positive or negative. Leaders, just like everyone else, can have both great and bad character and personality traits. Remember, a great personality does not guarantee a great character. Now, it went on to say that you can always tell a positive leader from a negative one by the outcome of their actions, beliefs, and ideologies. So once again, it's seeing the result of what these ideas become. Notice it also says negative leaders lack integrity. They may be selfish or lack compassion and respect for life. They usually consider only their own opinions or those who reflect their opinions. They don't exemplify to their followers the importance of achieving a positive moral character and the benefits of attaining positive goals. In many instances, uh, negative leadership has resulted in hatred, violence, and death. Positive leaders, on the other hand, are people of integrity. They maintain and demonstrate their positive character trait or their positive moral character consistently, notice, through their beliefs, attitudes, and actions. And remember, that's what really defines a character, whether it's positive or negative. These morals that we have, whether someone believes that these morals are important or not important. It goes on to say that they motivate others to attain positive moral character traits and to strive toward excellence in all areas of their lives. In addition to this, positive leadership will result in a ripple effect that will be advantageous not only to the individual but to a society as a whole. Hence, the deciding factor between positive and negative leader is the same that decides the quality 
either positively or negatively of all people and of course that is character it's character and of course we're going to be building on this character and talking about how this character this leadership this governing ourselves we have to lead ourselves and of course we have to be taught how to do this but that deciding factor is this morality and how much we look at these rules as important we deem them to be important talking about scheduling and organization and being responsible whether eh, it doesn't matter if i show up 10 minutes late or it's really important that i be five minutes early you know and that's something that that's something that if you go to work on a job you know and i'll just say this before we get into this deciding factor and about being responsible and i want you to think about it if you apply for a job and your job says you're supposed to be at work at 8 a.m what time should you be walking through the door or what time should you be getting on the job site you know 8 a.m or should you be working at 8 a.m you know some people define being on time as walking through the door your employer looks at it no i'm paying you at 8 a.m not walking through the door today no you should be working at 8 a.m and it's very important that we realize that if we're supposed to be working at 8 a.m we should appear on our jobs five till eight ten till eight um when i worked in a furniture factory and we were supposed to be at work at seven o'clock we we would strive to get there at six forty-five. that would be the latest because when that you wouldn't allowed to work till seven o'clock um they would shut off the air compression and everything because it was paid by the piece it wasn't paid by the hour but everybody wanted to get a head start and they made sure you couldn't so people were literally ready they're standing ready to go at 7 a.m and you can only imagine what would take place if the man who's supposed to turn the air on to the system didn't arrive at 7 a.m. You would have a lot of upset people because you're standing there not getting paid because, once again, you're not getting paid by the hour. But think about that. You know, if you're supposed to be at work at 8 o'clock, you should get there a little early. Don't get there at 8.05 or 8.10 or 8.15. You know, well, you should be thankful I showed up at all. You know, and sooner or later you know the, the supervisor the boss man looks for someone that will show up at eight o'clock so think about that because the deciding factor really depends on how important we look at these rules do we take them as uh, no the rule says we're supposed to be here at this time and we're supposed to be doing this so therefore we should be doing it or do we go eh, it's just a suggestion you know if everybody shows up late you know i know i live in a small town rush hour is between 750 and 755 in the morning that's rush hour you don't want to be out on the street during rush hour and then it mellows back down again you know it's a great but everybody gets to where they need to go at that time you know and they're on time when they do that but that's rush hour in the, t the town i live in but here continuing on it says once again the decision to be accountable in all aspects of life and once again we talked about accountability and being responsible for what we do not looking at everyone else but being accountable, you remember, accountability starts with ourselves, and that's what we discussed. But the decision to be accountable in all aspects of life must be done consistently over a period of time before one is considered a responsible person. So once again, this is something that's developed. It's not something you do one time and it's, oh, there's a responsible guy. No, it has to be done repeatedly. You know, think about you pay your car payment on time the first three months. And then you don't pay a car payment again for the next four months. Do you think the bank's going to go, yeah, they, they, were, they were responsible the first three months? No, they're going to say, we're going to repossess it because you were not responsible over the past four months. So think about, you know, we can do the right thing temporarily, but we have to be consistent with it for it to be a benefit to us. It says, this is an important fact to teach children. It is vital that children understand that they cannot be inconsistent in making responsible decisions for even one irresponsible choice can change the outcome of their lives and you know with a child you speak of you know doing homework getting your homework done making sure you get it to school turn it in you know something simple as brushing your teeth um, trying to prevent you know you can't always prevent cavities from coming some of these things are hereditary as we talked about in the beginning of the peaceful solution you know, but if you've ever noticed, what do you do before you, if you have a dental appointment, what is the first thing you do? I got a dental appointment at two o'clock or the last thing you do. What is, what do you do? You go in there and you just, ah, 
You brush your teeth like you haven't brushed them in 10 years because you want the dentist to think, oh, my teeth are clean. But I had a dentist tell me one time they were laughing about certain things. And they said, you know, one thing that being a dentist, most people come in here with the freshest breath and they'll brush. And we always can tell they did it because their gums will be bleeding. They brush so hard. They just scrub and scrub. And they said, what they don't realize is all the problems they have in their mouth, we can tell took place over the last year, two years, five years, 10 years. So it doesn't do anything but give them fresh breaths when they scrub their teeth like that. And it damages their gums a little bit too. But we all think, oh, we got a bring enough brush and floss. I haven't flossed in five years, so let me floss. You know, but these are things where we try to make somebody think we're going because of a problem, but we want the dentist to think, hey, I was responsible the whole time. It just occurred in my mouth that way. When it doesn't, it kind of takes, and it can be many different factors that go into that, but that's one time where people want to look responsible when they really wouldn't be responsible in some cases. Not in all cases, in some cases. You know, and, and of course, children have to be taught at a young age hygiene, you know, especially when they get into their middle, you know, 13, 14, 15 years of old, they have to be taught how to be responsible, you know, and use products to help themselves, you know, and, and I know everybody thinks that, oh, not me, I don't need that stuff, I'll never smell that way. Everybody around you will not agree with you, you know, I can promise you that. So once again, being consistent, you know, using deodorant as we went over in the self-control and the respect unit with, you know, we're going to go over it again tonight with hygiene. You know, if you take a bath, oh, I took a bath yesterday. When's the next time you're going to, ah, three or four days from now, I'll take another bath. You know, well, great. Uh, what about deodorant? Ah, I put it on last week. I try not to wash too much. It carries on, you know, and no, that doesn't work that way. You know, we have to remember to be respectful of others. You know, it's extremely important. And I also know, you know, just to bring this up, I know there are some cultures that do not believe in using deodorant. And if you were to go to a certain country that didn't practice using deodorant, what do you think the respectful and responsible thing would be to do? To go in and tell everybody, ah, you guys stink, you should be doing this. Does that work if you go into someone else's culture and it's not immoral to not use deodorant? Some people don't believe in putting chemicals on their body. Some people use a certain stone. You know, I have friends that use essential oils and they do very well with hygiene. You know, so don't think that, well, I use this brand and everybody should use it too. No, not necessarily. Some people are allergic to things and they can't do it. So also be mindful you know, when we're teaching these classes and we're telling people you need to do this, this, and this, make sure we're also of the mindset there's many different ways you can do it. And there's many different ways you can take care of it. And in some cultures, it's not even considered very important. And sometimes it's due to they don't really have what we have here. Sometimes the culture itself doesn't have certain things. So keep those things in mind as we, um, if you teach classes on an international level, you have to be respectful of what that group of people have within their reach and you have to be mindful of that not everybody lives in the united states and no one else has at their fingertips what we have here um it's you know you can go to china where they're technologically developed japan and other countries they might have more technology but when it comes down to being spoiled and having everything at our fingertips the united states tops the charts you know um, we not we, I know they just came out with the happiest place to live in the United States. We're just one above Mexico now. So Mexico might want to consider that before they come up here. Um, Mexico is going to be above the United States here before long. But, you know, as far as having things at our fingertips, we have it here. And when you live in, you know, and I, this goes along with being responsible because I, I stress this. When you have as much as we have here at our disposal, and you might not think you don't have much, I can promise you, if you think you don't have much, get with me on a Saturday morning, and I will introduce you to groups of people that would love to have what little you have. They would feel like they've won the lottery because they have nothing. You know, we've seen in a report here not long ago, people in Haiti eating mud pies. Why? Because they need something to fill their guts. They have nothing else. You know, in other cultures, you know, I, I know of one 
group of people that are following the peaceful solution they eat beans and rice every day 365 days a year beans and rice and they fix it a hundred different ways but it's all they can afford and i'm amazed that nobody was complaining that kind of shocked me because i would have you know i'm spoiled i'm a spoiled american after you know four or five days of beans and rice i'd be like okay y'all gonna have to come up with something different but no, nah, these people are thankful because it's not, it's not an option to complain. Complaining means you're just going to go hungry. So think about that when we talk about being responsible and, and using these things and putting these things together because um, sometimes complaining can transcend into others. Sometimes complaining can make children look at things very differently and where they would have been thankful, now they're being disrespectful. Now they're not being responsible caretakers of what they've been given. And we're going to keep getting into that as we get into this page right here and into this chapter. So concepts that are going to be taught in this lesson are, the very first one, self-control, consistency, and discipline are necessary. And we'll get into those definitions and, of course, what we're talking about as we get into the lesson plan. But all of these things we've covered before the self-control, the consistency, and the discipline, notice they're necessary. It's a necessary ingredient, and of course, getting into this lesson plan will we'll put these things together. But they're necessary elements for maintaining a responsible character. So you have to have them. The second one is irresponsible choices can be dangerous and irrevocable. You know, and if, if you don't have it there, write down, remember, and this is just one part of this book, pages between 49 and 59. You know, we went over the heart of the matter. We talked about uh, conformity and the peer pressure, the effect of drug, alcohol abuse, uh, the effects of being promiscuous and going out and, and you know, contracting these diseases that are just skyrocketing right now, whether it be syphilis in the United States, gonorrhea in Europe. Almost every country you see, these things are skyrocketing, and everybody likes to blame COVID for everything. I don't care what it is, the results of COVID, because we were all put together in a very, you know, compact area, that hasn't been that way in a few years. You know, so there comes a time where we have to quit blaming COVID and start realizing, no, gonorrhea and syphilis spread because we do that, because of choices we're making, because of the lack of self-control and the lack of being responsible. When you see disease spreading, you know, and it is irrevocable, you know, you get certain STDs, there's nothing that's going to get rid of it. And think about that. We've covered these things in detail on microscopic levels and how things operate. Imagine getting something in your body, no matter how hard you try with these pharmaceuticals that come out, and the most knowledgeable doctors who go to the most pristine colleges, the best thing they can do is give you a pill that will help herpes go to sleep so you don't have outbreak. That's the best thing they can come up with because they don't have a clue how to get it out. And they tell you, once you got it, you got it. There's nothing we can do besides, you know, put it to sleep a little bit more. But even with that, you know, it kind of adapts and we have to give you something stronger that it adapts and we have to give you something stronger you know, so it's better to never get into these situations. Be responsible for the choices that we make. And the next one is, it is important to maintain responsible interaction with others. You know, we've talked about that repeatedly, and that is probably one of the easiest things to let go because of emotions, and we want to say things. We want to get our opinion across because we feel it's important to get our opinion out. But once we say these things, and once we kind of, spew sometimes these words we can't take them back and they can be very hurtful you know so we need to be more responsible and consider others first and then of course the reward for maintaining a responsible character is a positive reputation and of course someone who sets the example so here at the very bottom it says so often we realize the importance of maintaining a responsible character after we have made choices we regret and we also covered in the self-control unit, remember hindsight is twenty twenty, And there's a lot of things I personally would like to go back and, and change and redo. And, you know, even in my own life, even the development of certain things in my life, you know, go back and, and put forth more effort in certain things and take away effort that I put in other things. 
But you know what? You can't get that time back as we talked about. Time, once it's spent, it's gone. It's done. You know, we're continually making history. The only thing we have is future. You know, history takes place one second at a time. And the future is only one second away. And the changing of whether the direction we're going in a positive, negative direction is really just waiting on us. Because the time doesn't stop. It's not going to stop. We're continually making history, and we're continually uh, up using our future. You know, but our future, well, how long is your future? How long is my future? Well, don't really know. You know, don't really know how much time we have or what we can do with what we have. That's what we're in control of. But how much time we have to do it? Well, we can say, oh, I think I got another 10 years, another 20 years. You never know. You never know, you know, how much time you have. So you have to do the best with what you have. But continuing on here, and this is very important, as educators, parents, and role models, never forget what we talked about with becoming a role model, being an example to others. As educators, parents, and role models, this is our opportunity to teach our children to maintain a responsible character and avoid those things that can negatively affect their lives. You know, So we have to be able to teach them, hopefully not from experience, hopefully not telling them, this is what you need to do because this is why I'm suffering because of what I did. So I would like to help you. But, you know, sadly, we kind of learn from experiences in our life, but it's something we should be able to help our children, and, and they can help their children. And if you look at it, if everybody learns to do a little bit less in the negative format, we become more positive. And you can actually, through a few generations, you can eradicate a lot of negativity we can eradicate a lot of negativity. You know, think about, as the author of The Peaceful Solution would say many times, you know, he gave a class one time and he talked about the first plane took flight, if I'm not mistaken, was December 17th, 1903. He was talking about the Wright brothers in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. You'd think I'd remember that since I'm from North Carolina. But it was Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And he was showing how the flight was only 100 yards, and that's shorter than our auditorium we have here, and that's what he compared it to, 100 yards. And from 1903 to 1945, they were dropping atomic bombs that destroyed entire cities. Now, think about who was responsible for that. And was that a benefit to society, or was that a detriment to society? Well, if you've never been able to look at the history and what people from Japan have to say, you know, they will tell you it was not a positive thing. If you listen to other countries, we ended the war and we got them in control. Well, was it positive that people were burnt alive and incinerated and had cancer and destroyed uh, their breeding of genetics for, you know, you wiped out generations. Literally, people that could have had children couldn't have children. Things were totally annihilated. Is that really how we define success? Is that a responsible society? Well, you know, why do I say that? Because it's not a one-time thing. If you think that was the only time someone's going to make a decision to do that and say we did it for the betterment of mankind, you're not watching what's going on in society today because they're talking about doing it again and we're forgetting about the devastation that took place. We're forgetting about the harm, the destruction, the hurt, the pain, and how we even damaged society, the earth itself, for so many years. You know, so we're going to have to breed a society, teach a society that looks to be responsible enough to make decisions without destruction, without harm, without, ah, don't worry, you can go down to the uh, doctor's office and get a shot. That'll take care of it. We have to look at a society who will do things differently because what we're doing is not working. We're not a responsible society. We're a very irresponsible society right now. And that's why we see so many things going the negative way. Remember we just read about you can tell the result of a responsible leader through the ideology and, of course, the outcome of their beliefs and decisions. When you see negativity resulting from that, you know something needs to be changed. So think about that with that in mind. Going here to Procedure 1 on Lesson Plan 5, page C. Lesson Plan 5, page C. It says, Review the previous lesson, Tick Tock, Tick Tock, Time Management, by reminding students that managing their time effectively is an important part of being responsible. Ask students the following questions. 
You know, the first one here is what are the basic steps to time man or to managing your time? Notice the example we give here is the basic steps to time management are to know your wants versus your needs, prioritize, make a schedule, organize your belongings, and stay focused on what needs to be done. And of course, we just covered these the last class, and you can go back through your notes and tie these in together, but the answer is there in italicized for you. And then, of course, B, in what ways can you be more organized? Well, these answers are going to vary because each individual has different lives and are going to have different um, kind of environments within their own life, uh, households, what I'm speaking of. But answers might vary, but should include. So these are some very basic ingredients that should be present here. You can be more organized by keeping your belongings neat and orderly, writing down all assignments, and making sure you have the right books before you leave uh, for school. You know, I, I remember a class that Catan taught here about a nightmare he had. He showed up to class, had the wrong book, came in late, you know, and this was a nightmare he had, of course, and I've had these nightmares myself, never as vivid as his, but you never want to show up to a responsibility class without your notes, without your, you know, without your book. You, you, it's kind of hard to teach a responsibility class when you have to show you're irresponsible for the whole class. Um, so that, that is a true nightmare. It'd be a very, very much an embarrassment. But here to procedure two. So that's after you review, of course, the last chapter, which we've done that with what I have learned the last class and this class. So looking here to procedure two, it says, tell students that in today's lesson, they will learn how to ma uh, maintain a responsible character. And remember, we talked about building and maintaining our character. Remember, we compared it to like a car where you have to maintain it, change the oil, the spark plugs, you know. I know there's mechanics sitting out here, and I know they'll tell you. I have people I know, they think changing the oil every 15,000 miles is a great thing. Just think of the money I've saved. I made 15,000 miles in that oil, and when I drained it, there wasn't two quarts to get rid of, you know. I didn't even have to work too, too hard to it. But a mechanic will tell you, no, you know, you need to go every three to 5,000 miles, just depending on how you do it. You know, and I know... Uh, when you talk about very simple things, you know, and, and we talked about maintaining cars because young teenage men like cars. You know, girls, they like different things, and they talk about maintaining their hair, you know, their skin, and other things. But all of these things, and we're going to get into it in this chapter, where maintaining these things, no matter whether you're a boy or a girl, they require care. They require basic maintenance. You have to uh, look at them and, and watch over them and take care of how you're treating them. Well, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, I had a mechanic here who's in this class right now who was telling me, you know, that air filter, people think when you get those things, you take them out and you beat them and you shake all the dust out of them and throw them back in, and you just do that. Instead of spending money for another air filter, uh, air filter I just keep beating it out. He said, eventually you can't beat it out. It's full because we have plegy dust and everything else around here. And, uh, you know, they say, you know, this is just a big air pump. You have to get air through it for it to work. And these are things that if you don't know that a motor is just a big air pump, you don't realize that if you don't get air into this thing, you're going to suffocate it. You're going to cause a lot of pressure to build up. Something's got to break. It can't go on forever. But, you know, when I had somebody explain it to me, it made a lot of sense to me. And until they explained that to me, I didn't realize it. And from that day forward, I made sure, you know, to try to be responsible for that. But here we're going to learn this maintaining uh, a responsible character, not just in automotive, but, you know, in general. It says, have students turn to page 77 of their handbooks and read the introduction. Guide class discussion by asking what are some other things not mentioned in the text that must be maintained. So we're going to test them a little bit. We're not going to, you know, repeat what you have just learned or repeat after me. No, what are some other things and they can pull back through the previous books what we've talked about, you know, and that's very important that they are pulling back what we've went over. Notice you see, you see here that the answers might vary, but they can include a car because the oil must be changed and the engine tuned periodically, a house uh, because repairs must be done and the house must be cleaned on a regular basis, the lawn because the grass must be mowed and watered. So here we're going to turn over. Let's turn over to page 77 here in Procedure 2. Um, so here on page 77, introductory to the chapter. And at the very top it says, being responsible is something you must practice and work at. 
And don't forget, you know, the making of a VIP, this practice, practice, practice. You know, once again, I have page 73 of the character unit written all through my books. Because that's where you find uh, the making of a VIP, where we talk about how practice, practice, practice creates things and makes it a habit. And the reason i done that, because the author of The Peaceful Solution, he said one time in a speech, it was February of 2001, and we had an international conference here. We had people from all around the world. This auditorium was packed full of people. And in the speech he gave, I remind you, February of 2001, he was telling everybody that if we didn't make changes and become responsible citizens in our society, we were going to start seeing some very devastating things take place because of hatred, violence, and aggression. And it wasn't, what, eight months later, nine months later, we've seen September 11th because of hatred, violence, aggression, and the lack of respect that was being shown. You know, but he also brought up and showed how mankind, we learn through repetition. We have to learn through hearing things over and over and over, just like when we learn our ABCs, when we learn uh, many different things. You have to practice, and the more we practice, the better we become. Whether you're learning to play a musical instrument, whether you're learning to do a certain task, develop an ability to do a work trade, it takes practice. It becomes becoming knowledgeable. And, of course, remember that when we apply that knowledge that we've learned, then it, we're showing wisdom. And I'm speaking a positive. I'm not saying, you know, you learn how to cook crystal meth and now you're selling it on the street corner. That's not wisdom. Uh, wisdom only comes with positive things and the effects that it has on society. So chapter 5 here, it's not a one-time thing. Introduction. Most things in life uh, need consistent care and attention in order, to, uh, in order for their value to be retained. Think about it. You don't have to take... Think about it. Don't you... Uh, let me try here again. I should think about it. Don't you have to take care of your belongings? So that's a question. You're pondering a question to others. You know, and think about this as you're doing this. This is something that is a... It's a fact that to me it's kind of a miraculous thing. You can have a house and people live in it and it tends to go fairly well. But if you leave a house empty, for some reason the house just starts falling apart on its own, it seems like. And, it's, and I've asked people that are in real estate, why do houses, and you can build a brand new house, and all of a sudden it just like, it just starts crumbling on itself. Why do things that are not inhabited start just falling apart? And, you know, I had a person in the real estate, uh, he was a real estate agent. He said, you know, that's one of life's greatest mysteries with houses. You know, setting by itself for six months or a year, nah. But if you let a house set for five or ten years, you get all kinds of problems that take place. You know, and our bodies and our minds are the same way. If we continually educate, educate ourselves a little every day in the right direction, we maintain that. We're doing fairly well. But let it go for a little while. And it's amazing how fast the body can crumble. When we start doing negative things, we quit reminding ourselves of positive things. And unlike a house, you know, you can cut out the sheetrock, you can relevel the house, you can do many things. Don't work that way with our bodies. You can't just, you know, oh, cut this off and put me something new on. It doesn't work that way. So notice here it says, by treating them with care and putting them away after you use them, talking about our belongings, you know, and this could be anything that we own, something valuable to you. And remember what is valuable. It means you deem it to be important. You prevent them from being lost or damaged. You also have to take care of yourself. You can't just, just bathe once a week and be clean for the rest of your life. Nor can you clean your room once and have it remaining clean for years to come. You know, I think about that. That's one of life's greatest mysteries. I wash my clothes every week, and for some reason, I always have more. You know, I didn't think about it when someone else was washing my clothes, but when I wash my clothes, I complain. And, you know, I, I tell you, um, you know, we're almost out of time here. If you want to write for your notes beside that paragraph in that area, chapter 2 of the Respect Unit, because that was entitled Respect for Myself. And that's where we went over how to respect ourselves. But one time, uh, this was just a few uh, weeks ago, 
I was speaking to someone out of the country, and they, they you know, it was like 11:30 at night, and they sent me, uh, you know, a message, uh, asked me, you know, hey, what are you doing? You know, wanting to know if I had time to talk about some things that they were going over in their lesson plan. And I said, I'm washing clothes. You know, one of the things I don't like to do, but is a necessary thing. And they asked, well, do you wash clothes by hand or with a machine? I'm like, oh, I use a machine. I'm not washing clothes by hand. And they sent back a picture of a bucket and a faucet and a scrub board. And they said, when you wash clothes like I do, complain. Until then, I need your time. <laughs> I thought, you know what? Not going to say another word because you, you really just put me back in my place. <laughs> And I kind of laughed at it because they were joking about it. And they said, you know, it would be a dream if I had a washing machine. I cannot imagine just throwing my clothes in something, turning a button, and walking away. You know, for them, that that's something that just doesn't seem there. And here, you know, there's some people here have washing machines. There's some people that don't. I know people here that prefer to wash their clothes by hand. But you know what? You tend to think about what people go through just to maintain this responsibility of taking care of themselves. You know, because washboards are something that are still used here in the United States. I know people here that live in our community that use washboards. They prefer it. Some people do it because it's the only thing available, but they still do it, and they make sure they adhere to that. You know, so we're going to pick up. I'll, I'm going to stop right here. David's going to pick up. Remember, the class will be a week from today. And he'll go back starting with this introduction, but he'll go back through starting with consistency and what it means to take care of something. You know, so mark your calendars, you know, get your schedules ready. No class this Sunday. The Peaceful Solution is going to have a special event here, so we won't have any streaming classes. But one week from today, March 27th, 530, we're going to have class that day. We're going to pick up on page 77 here um, in Procedure 2, or Procedure 3, Procedure 3, excuse me. Oh, no, Procedure 2. Procedure 2 on that day. So thank you once again for joining us.